Koto Katoa, Ko Portia Richmond Topo Ingoa, Ko Inglewood Primary School Takura. Uh, for my Mahiri Reo, Te Mana o Te Reo, He Faka Hiko Hiko, the things that drive my children are motivators such as going outside. They love to go outside for games or going to the pool or for swimming lessons each week and they are very driven by nature and their outside environment. Um, the things that excite my children are movement, music and colour. They love swimming, some of my students love drawing, they all love painting, food, new people in the classroom, tuakana tēnā, buddy class and building creations with Lego blocks and toy animals. The biggest thing that excites my children is the outdoor environment, which is why I have chosen for my mahiri reo, te mana o te reo, is birds. So here I have built a piwaka waka, a fantail, a fio, a duck, a ruru, and I think that this topic will inspire my children as they love to go outside and be in nature and they're very interested by our nature trail that we have at school and the trees that surround our kura. Tree and our kura. Te ako i te reo. For te ako i te reo, for my mahi reo, I have identified that books, songs and waiata and games will be great to extend the vocabulary and sentences of the kaupapa of birds. Um, in terms of books, only referring to the birds we are learning about by the Māori kupu, reading lots of stories about, book, about birds, and interchanging the English kupu for the Māori kupu as we are reading to ingrain those kupu into our brain and to provide normalcy. Um, there are quite a few waiata on sites like YouTube that I have found that sing about different birds and so providing that waiata and that kōrero it becomes more natural to use the kupu when they are put in the form of a waiata and the children in my class love singing so that will bring out a lot of motivation for them and inspire them to speak the kupu and to sing the kupu which will be great at ingraining it into their brains and also the use of games i think that it's very important for in a new entrant classroom to use plenty of games and activities that would consolidate the learning through a fun medium to make it more enjoyable and entertaining for them to the point where it doesn't feel like a lesson it feels enjoyable and will promote the language the kupu of birds the complexity of the right reo being used will be improved as the students become more familiar with the use of reo by using descriptive language to describe the birds. For example, the kiwi that has feathers that are parori. The use of colour, size and shape to describe birds to further develop the understanding of the topic in both English and te reo Māori. And also... Um, the time, and time spent in immersion will be lengthened as the students and kaiako become comfortable using the reo for this kaupapa. To incre it'll increase the amount of time that we are spending in the reo immersion and also it will be interchanged so that the only kupu being used for the topic of birds is te reo Māori instead of English being used dually. Te tīnana o te reo. He waka pūmo, what local identity will become a foundation of tikanga and reo use. 
um, Matua Sunny. He lives local to the school and will be a great resource as he knows a lot about the kupu of the rohe here in Taranaki. Um, I will also be using a lot of YouTube videos to do some research around the kupu and making my lesson engaging for my children through the use of these resources and the digital technology. Um, another option for my mahi reo could be to find people that are an expert like the team at Lake Rorakari Scenic Reserve that would provide a lot of information and clarity around the different birds and their habitats which would be an amazing resource for me as a kaiako and for my students to learn from other kaiako around the rohe and an additional resource could be the use of the Māori dictionary te aki and pai kupu um, here Waka rangatira, how will the local reo and tikanga be given real status in the learning environment? Um, by, I think that by bringing parents into the conversation and telling them about their students' learning and getting the reinforcement at home will make it more natural to normalise the language and to revitalise it through the parents as they would have some experience with the kupu and maybe they just need a refresher which could come through their students um, through their children as a channel to them which would give the language status in the community um, I think that also as teachers it's really important for us to familiarize ourselves with the kupu first and then familiarize the learners with the kupu before we go on an excursion that would validate the kupu directly. He whakatangata whenua. How will the reo and tikanga become normalised in the identity of the learning environment? Um, using exclusively the Māori kupu to talk about birds. Um, students use the language, students will use their language with their peers, their fano, and outside of the classroom. And the repetition of the new kupu will provide normalcy through conversation and repeated exposure with the language in the lives of the students. He whakamahi i te reo. He te whakamahi i te reo. He whakahau. Um, how will their learners be exposed to reo being used in a greater range of contexts? Um, this could be done by going on an excursion to Lake Krotakiri Scenic Nature Reserve and experience to learn about the native birds from experts which would provide the students with an opportunity to learn um, to speak their kupu ho, their new kupu. Um, during our mahiri reo on the kaupapa of birds, the students will be learning to ko kupu ho. Um, 10 new words which will include tui, kereru, riro riro, korimako, piwaka waka, tauhau, fio, patiki, matata, ruru and they will also be exposed to some patai about where the birds are. So ke here te fio, um, where is the fio? Um, ke roto i te awa. he is in the river. Um, ke hia te piwaka waka, ke runga i te kauri. Ke hia te ruru, ke roto i te ohanga. Um, the students, the specificity of the reo being used in various context, contexts and activities will be extended based on the learners and how comfortable they get with speaking the new reo. Um, as my learners are new entrants, most of them are five years old and I know that most of the time it can be hard for them to structure sentences in English so I'm going to base the complexity on where they are at and how they are tracking through the kaupapa of my mahiri reo which is birds. Um, it also could be extended 
by looking at their habitat. Um, birds that live in trees or on the ground. Um, this could also be extended by looking at their diet and lifestyle, um, which would lead to a variety, a wider variety of kupu, for example, bugs, trees, the mountain, and the forest. Um, here, waka wanaunga, what can be done to connect different real settings to provide a more diverse experience, uh, linking the topics, topic of birds to other animals that the students are familiar with. Perhaps this can be done through looking at a predator or prey chain of animals to link some of the animals um, that could perhaps eat birds or in turn the prey chain with the diet of the birds which could look at bugs and plant life. Te marama pū. Here, whakatako tō. Uh, what language goals will be set down to seek to achieve? Um, my main goal is for the students to learn the 10 Tako Kupuho, which is, are the names of the birds that will be exposed to in my Mahiri Reo. Another language goal is using the language in their own homes, going home and being able to speak to their Fano, the appearance, their caregivers about what they've been learning at school and continue the conversation at home. Um, here, Fakatuku Tuki, uh, here, Fakatu Tuki, Araha Mai, um, how will you know that the language goals have been achieved? Um, the students will use the new kupu exclusively to talk about birds or for the students that aren't quite there they will use most of the new kupu to talk about birds. Um, the students' parents could have the conversation with me or their caregivers about what they have been talking about at home in regards to our mahiri reo. And another way that I will know that the learning goal has been achieved are that I see that my students are more comfortable using the kupu exclusively. Um, here, Faka Pa Kari. Once achieved, how will the their achievements be made durable in the long term? Um, when the process has been completed, I will slowly change the topic from birds to bugs or plants, and that will provide clarity of where the students need some revision, where they need more work and extend on that knowledge. Um, another process that's really important for Te Marama Pū is the review of what went well, what did not go so well and what needs to change in order for this to be more successful next time, which can be done by surveying my students, asking them some questions about how they think it went or having a, as I'm a beginning teacher, having a mentor observe some of the teaching of my mahiri reo and asking the questions to them to provide me with the feedback that could be more helpful in the um, delivery of my mahiri reo for next time. Um, nā mihi koutou, thank you for listening to my mahiri reo presentation.